and I recommend that you take notes on this. The notes would be copying down what you see me write. So, first off, what you need to know is that not all of the atoms on the periodic chart will form only one charge. All right, here comes the trash can. 200 for Monday. So, I took three examples. These guys are normally going to be found in the transition metals. And transition metals would be, include the iron and ruthium and niobium. Those are the three good guys that I chose because they had lots of different charges. And so I can give you several examples for each and help you understand how this works. What is the problem? Let's look at it. Now, when you look at this formula, what's your natural reaction to name it? Fe is iron. Iron oxide. Iron, iron, oxide. iron oxide. iron oxide. Of course. That's, that's exactly what you should name it based on what you know right now. So what we have is if I call this guy iron oxide, I'm creating a ma magnificent problem for myself. Why? Because this guy can have a charge of 2, 3, or 6. And depending on that charge, you'd have different ratios of the atoms. And so the subscripts would change. And when the subscripts change what like that, here we have uh, Mario. And so let's, let's see how this works. It's not all that difficult. And once you get the idea of how it works, you can do all the problems perfectly every time. And this should allow you to do what is being asked you to do in the do now. So let's start out. I look at the anion, the negative dude, which is always the second one in an ionic compound. So, what's the charge on oxygen as an ion? We would call it the oxide ion. Oxygen would be negative minus two. Minus two. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Now, how many oxygens do I have? Three. Two. Three times two? Six. Six. 6 minus is my charge for, for the oxide. Now, I have two iron atoms in this molecule, and for each atom, I have to figure out what the charge is. Well, it's a piece of cake. I take the 6, and I divide it by the subscript of the iron. Okay, 6 divided by 2. Three. Now, you don't call it negative because it is going to be for the iron, which will always be a positive number. Yes? Can you please see how you got the minus two and sigma? How did you get Sure. Well, you told me what the charge was on oxygen. Minus two? Minus two. There's three of them. Okay. Three times two. But, so the minus six is the charge of that whole thing? No. It's the charge of the oxide. All three oxygens together? All three oxygens together. Okay. Now that I have the total negative charge of 6 minus, if I divide that by 2, that will tell me how many are, what the charge has to be on the iron if two irons are going to give me the offset for the 6. So I have to come out with net 0. Okay? Now, let's, let's go ahead and write it. Iron, this is how you write these guys. Instead of iron oxide, we have to tell who is ever looking at this formula so they can come back with this formula. They want, to, they want to make this formula from the name. So I tell them iron 3. 3 is the charge on the iron. And then oxide. So it's not terribly different from what you've already done. So we have iron 3 oxide. And when you read this, if you know what you're doing, you will be able to write that precise formula. So, for the first line of this guy, my charge was a 3. All right, let's go down. Now, iron, how do we name this? Iron phosphate. Iron phosphate. What is the charge on the phosphate ion? Four. Four oxygens. Four oxygens in the phosphate. But one phosphate has what negative charge? 
negative three. three. So with a negative three times two, what do we get? Excuse me, what do we get? Six minus, okay, same negative charge. Only this time there's only one iron to offset that. So I take iron, which is a going to have a subscript of one, because it's not written, divide that into my 6 minus, six. and so now we have iron 6. Okay, so this is iron 6 phosphate. Well, then you got to learn. You'll have to learn to write your numbers from 1 to 5. It's not that tough. So you divide No, 1 to 5. For the chart, or yeah, or one to six, yeah. So you divide the, the subscript by the second one charge? No, you divide the subscript of the metal into the negative negative six. Yeah. And you want to like the other way you have a fraction, right? Okay. All right. Now this guy's really easy. What is the charge on oxygen as an ion? Minus two. One. Two one. Just like it was up here. Okay, so we have a 2 minus, right? What does the charge on iron have to be? We divide the 2 minus by 1. So this guy's iron 2. Iron 2, and this is oxide. Just keep watching. This will, you, you'll get it. I'm, I'm telling you, the, I'm going through the process each time. In fact, let's do the process now. Let's write this down. Put this down in your journal. Okay? I'm going to pause the recording while you're right. Okay, Stephanie, you're going to do this one with us. Okay? This is ruthenium, and it's with phosphorus. Now, this phosphorus atom is going to have a 3 minus charge. Okay? So, if we have two of them, what's the total negative charge? Yes. Uh -huh. Six minus. Okay? Now, with ruthenium at a six minus charge, I'm, I'm sorry, with phosphide at a six minus charge total for both phosphides, what is the subscript of ruthenium? Look at it. One, one, one. one. Yes. One because there is no subscript. So when there is no subscript, that means there's just one. Okay. okay. One divided into six. Six. Six is the charge on ruthenium. So this guy, whoops, is over here. <laughs> A six. Okay. All right. Now, we, we write it this way. Ruthenium. V1, okay, that's the charge on the on the ruthenium, okay? Because the charge on ruthenium could be 8, 4, 3, or 1, or 2, okay? It could be any of those charges. How do you know it could be any of those? Because you, I have a chart that tells, tells me that. You, you, wouldn't know, you wouldn't be able to figure that out. Just, 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 what, just, just, just a second, I want to make sure that you're on, okay. Did that make sense? Yeah. Good, good. As we do each one, it'll get easier. Yes? So positive and negative doesn't matter. Positive and negative is not an issue, just like it's not an issue for the subscript. Okay? It's always absolute value. You know, you know I had to tell you that, because you don't know that. It's in a column that we don't have nailed down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had to tell you that. What is it called? Ruthenium 6 phosphate? Ruthenium, oh, ruthenium 6 phosphide. Phosphide? Uh-huh. Which, um, which one is phosphide? This guy. What is that guy called? That's phosphorus. Phosphorus becomes phosphide. Phosphate is phosphide. No, phosphate is phosphate. You just use the name of the ion. Yeah. Okay, let's do the next one. Someone want to do this one with me? Yeah. So let's try. Okay. Okay. All right. Go for it. Is this the tuna? Sulfate. What's 
it's how to do the do now. Yeah. Okay, you won't see sulfate on the chart. You need your memorized ions chart out. I know this by like, okay, hold on. Is it minus one? Okay, so sulfate is a two minus. Okay. Right? Minus. Now, how many sulfates do I have? What, where did you get 12 from? 4 times 3. Where did you get the 4 from? Next to the oxygen. No, that's 4 oxygens in the sulfate oh, ion. 3. 3 is so the six. subscript. So six, six 3 is the subscript for the sulfate ion. Okay. Now that means there's 3 of the total things. Okay? That's 3 sulfurs and tw uh, yeah, 12, 12 oxygens. So 3 times 2 uh -huh. 6. So, that charge was two, and three times two minus is six, six. minus. Whoops, don't this one here. Six minus. Okay, and then six minus by now, three. Divided by two? Three. Three. Okay. So this is ruthenium three, right? So why don't you go to the I don't think the O. Ruthenium three. Ruthenium three. Uh sulfate. Honey, the oxygen is just how many oxygens are there. It is not how many sulfates are there. Sulfate is SO4. Okay. Now, let's do ruthenium with carbonate. David, you want to do this with me? Okay. So, for carbonate, what's the total negative charge for one carbonate ion? It is two minus. Okay. Now, how many how many carbonates do I have? That is the subscript. Three times two. Six minus. Okay. Two because carbonate is a two minus ion. There's three of them. That gives us a total negative charge of six. So, now we take the subscript of ruthenium, divide it into the six minus, and what do we get? Three. So this is ruthenium three. Again. Ruthenium three what? Ruthenium three carbonate. Three and carbonate. That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay. So, let's, this guy is niobium, and with niobium, I've, I've given you an easy one to begin with. Who, who would like to do this one? Anyone? Okay, go. Boba? How many, uh, what's the charge on the chloride ion? One minus. one minus. How many chloride ions do I have? Four. Four. So, what's the total negative charge? Four minus. All right. So, we got a four minus there. What's the subscript on niobium? Excellent. One into four. Sure. So that tells us this is total name? Uh, Niobium. Niobium four. Niobium four. Chloride. Not in. I. Okay. Ions, the, the single atom ions or monatomic ions are always going to have an ide on them if they are negative. Okay. So. This is niobium. Niobium, okay. Niobium. Four. And we have chloride. Is that four? <coughs> niobium, four, chloride. All right. Niobium with sulfur. Here we go. Who wants to do this one? Huh? Yeah, come on, Sean. <laughs> I'll teach you to stretch. <laughs> okay, what do we do with niobium? Uh, first of all, we have to deal with the sulfur. All right, what's the charge on sulfur as an ion? Two minus. So that's the sulfide ion is two minus. So two minus times five, ten minus. Sure. All right, 
Now, when we divide that 10 by the 2, negative 5, but we, we change it to positive because the metals are always positive. So it's niobium 5. All right. You want to name it? Niobium? Watch on. The whole thing. Tell me the whole thing. Niobium? 5. I. So 5. Uh huh. Niobium. And this is 5. And that's so five. Okay. And our last one, niobium with oxygen. Okay. What? Emily, you want to do it? Oh, come on. Uh, oh, did you think you say what? What? Yeah. Okay. So, all right, on our last example, our anion is oxygen. It has a 2 minus charge, and there's three of them. And so, 3 times 2 is a 6 minus. We're back to 6 minus again. And we look at niobium. He has a subscript right here, and that is 2. And 2 into 6 is 3, which gives us the charge for the niobium ion. So that this molecule comes out to a balanced zero. The positive and the negative charges have to be the same. So we call this now niobium three and this is oxide. And you can see I could have three different compounds of niobium with oxygen each having a different ratio depending on what the oxidation number is for the niobium. And that's how you always figure out your formula for an atom that is mixed with, or a, a metal atom that is mixed with a negative ion. And it has the possibilities, as all of these guys do, of being more than one charge. Yes. Oh, let's see.